Alright, hopefully we can get everything done in 15 minutes here, so without further ado, let's get to it. Um, Saturday I got, I think it was Saturday, I got an autograph, and I'm not really sure if I've recorded it or not, but I had kind of a disappointing letter uh, from somebody, and I got 202 from Walter Ray Williams Jr., so hopefully I haven't shown this twice here, um, and I don't have the letter here right now, but he sent a big letter saying that I'm going to be selling his autograph, and he's asking for 5 and $10, uh, you know, $5 for each autograph. So if anybody knows about Walter Ray Williams Jr., it's still a point, and I got two cards signed, very nicely signed, but the letter was very uh, disheartening, um, and you can go to eBay and look and see how many Walter Ray Williams Jr. autographs are there. He has a website and all kinds of a Facebook things and YouTube channels that you can go and watch his achievements there of horseshoe pitching and um, bowling there. So I don't know what to do. Should I send Walter Ray Williams Jr. $5 or $10 and try to figure it out? If I send him $5 and he was like, aha, he's selling the other one or what have you. Or if I send him, you know, $10 and, but I don't want to be a rude dude, you know, um, and $10 to me is a lot of money. I mean, I have it, but it's just it's the principle of the thing. Um, so what we have here is a couple things here. Um, um, I've got uh, the last of the Byron letters here, and this time I did not rip his letter. I'm amazing. Um, and as I, as I said before in several videos, I have um, care packages going off to several people in YouTube land, um, but um, they have to take a while because I'm wasn't say a low on postage again. I think I have enough postage, but I am working really hard to get uh, these um, things organized and sorted, and I want to make sure that I don't forget anything. So I'm having to go through my multi bazillions of binders here. And speaking of binders, I wanted to show you one binder here very quickly. This is my NWSL binder for those people who haven't seen this before. And I thought maybe it'd be a nice idea to go back to uh, some of these autographs in here, um, cards and review them. I didn't find a lot of people that signed still, and unfortunately, you know, the data is so sporadic on here, so you'll see like three or four people that got them, and then there'll be like, you know, 12 people that have, um, are waiting for their autographs, and you never know if they update their pages, but I put N by all the ones uh, who are te technically no. You know, they don't sign. Whether they're back to England or they've retired or changed their name or they're just, you know, for whatever reason they aren't signing. And then some of them are so famous, you know, but again, I have about 20 autographs and it took absolutely no time whatsoever. It was not as easy as the, the bowling uh, set there, but again, it was just something that was really fun. And so I may or may not have purchased some more cards. Um, you'll have to see it. It's quite, quite the, quite the thing. Um, um, you know, I had just had, I had, I couldn't click, uh, purchase fast enough, so, um, it was a seller that I bought many of these cards from before. I think I only have one autograph request out, and whether it comes back or not, it was just Fishlock, and the last person that got them reported 400 and some days, um, for the autograph to come back. So hopefully that comes back because that was a nice card. Um, so we'll show you what Byron has sent here very quickly. And he said these are the last two of the eBay purchases. How cool. And then um, it looks like we've got two or three items here. Um, yeah, so let's see. Um, he said something that um, talks about the uh, old previous uh, letter there. Um, but anyway, these are, um, I think, child actors, and, um, let's see, um, yeah, um, I guess you're, I guess every actor is a former child actor, everyone, because well, they're former children, and they're, and so that would make them a former child actor. So, Eddie Hodges, and I want to say that this one, let's see, I think this is Eddie Hodges right here. Eddie Hodges, and that's an index cards of Eddie Hodges, so that has a multifaceted purpose there, so that's cool. And then we have, um, looks like Elaine DuPont, I think is what he said. Elaine DuPont is one of these people right here. 
Um, and that might, I'm guessing that's Elaine DuPont right there. It could be right there, but Elaine DuPont is in this photograph here, sign a black Sharpie here. And then this one here is Sydney, uh, look like Woim, um, Kill, uh, hi, Sydney Woim, how do you say that's his last name here? Um, Kilbrick, yes, Kilbrick. And it was signed on the back of it, because, it, you know, a lot of these old-fashioned photographs are quite dark. The films, you know, just how that... Um, so there is that one there. So I think he sent one of those before on an index card. But very cool that. And like I said, I will get people their care packages pretty soon. I have technically promised them this week here. But they might have to sit another week, depending on how, because business got really crazy today. So... Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is that um, in my previous video here, I was showing off my 45 record collection. Now, um, I was doing some research on YouTube just to see what the best, uh, the best option for 45 storage is. And I want to say probably the best option right now for me is to build my own um, 45 holders. So I have access to all kinds of wood. I want to say access. Um, I have some bits and pieces of wood that I have decided that I don't want to keep. Unfortunately, you have to make sure that when you're building something, you don't want it to be a, a thousand pounds. Because if you're going to have to m make these things movable, um, you want to make sure that you can get you know your records to... Um, 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 you know be moved or whatever and I was thinking about the plastic box method and I might still go with that I have uh, some sterilite boxes one of them um, and it's perfect unfortunately the 45 stick out you know and and for some people they can't have that and other people like them that way so you can flip through them the downside is that you have to figure out what to do with the lid and it's probably best to throw away the lid because if you're going to keep your 45s in those boxes forever you're never going to need the lid and that lid is just going to be in the way um, but i thought about making some wooden boxes for them and then putting them all in order so what i mean by order is alphabetical order but what i want to do because if i need to look for bowie um, I know that this is the only Bowie that I have, more or less, and I'm only going to probably be grabbing anything from the 1980s, so that will go in my 1980s section. And then I'll have a 90s section, which will be much smaller. And then I'll have like a 70s, maybe, 70s and before type section, because there's a lot of them that are records that were produced in the 50s and 60s, but reissued in the 70s and 80s. So, again, the, the, the music itself, and not necessarily the age of the vinyl, if that makes sense, will go in those particular areas. And everybody on YouTube was talking about cardboard boxes and these things from Ikea and all these other kinds of things here. But it's not super ridiculously difficult to build a box. Uh, just the cutting and making sure that your cuts are straight and all that fun stuff. You know, um, one of the things that I've learned is that if you go to the Habitat for Humanity Restore, if you have them, sometimes you can find people started projects or already cut pieces of wood from something else, some other kind of project. You know, um, so if you find some laminate flooring or whatever, sometimes you could do something with that, make shelves out of it instead of using it for flooring, which I've done before. I used a piece of laminate flooring to repair my record cabinet. And a lot of people reporting that they bought these IKEA ones and they turned them sideways, which there was nothing saying really you couldn't do that. So they turned all their shelves sideways and their shelves smashed and they had to reinvent their entire record collection, which was annoying. All because they cheaped out and didn't buy a piece of wood or use the right bracket for the back of it. It's like when you have a dresser and you don't attach it and a young child knocks it over. You know, you risk the damaging the, the furniture and the child. Um, but yeah, so it would be really nice to get all this stuff all put together here. Again, they're in cheap cardboard boxes, but that's usually what, you know, one person, their solution was to get a shoe box. And he said not all shoe boxes work and so on and so forth. The thing about that is that these 45s, as thin and light as they are, they get super heavy. And, and the corners start to split of your boxes, and it just gets to look really cheap and tacky. So I want to do something nice. And again, um, the ReStore is a great opportunity because I can get, um, say, like I can buy a couple of old cabinet doors for like a couple bucks a door. And then that gives me wood that's already varnished. You know, and then I could put those together and use whatever cheap piece of wood on the bottom that I might have on the wood pile. 
So that's pretty much the project that I'm working towards. And I may scrap that whole deal and just say, you know what, I need to go find more of those plastic boxes. And that would be the easiest thing and probably the cheapest thing, even though I think that I'd be saving money up front. Um, I'll have to double check and see if Sterilite still makes those boxes. Um, because um, that would be the, the way I'd want to go. And then once I get everything in order, I don't think I have any duplicates, but you never know. So that's today's video for now, unless I get something really crazy in the mail. Thank you, everybody who sends stuff. Let me know if I should send Mr. Walter Ray Williams Jr. Um, any money, or if you have gotten that letter. Because I know other people have been wanting to send off to him and see what it sends like. But he basically had a very stern letter, which I cannot find right here. It should have been right here on this table. And he said, um, you, you have already sent to me, you're probably selling my autograph. And, and these are the reasons why I want five and ten dollars. So very disheartening there. Um, but you know, um, he's not the first. Here we go. Thank you for being a fan since this is not your first time asking me to autograph trading cards. Now, I do not remember sending him before. Now, if I have, I apologize. I assume that you are selling them. In this case, I ask that you send me $5 for each card signed $10. Uh, I do have replica jersey. So this was custom. This letter was customized for me. Um, T-shirts, socks, DVDs for sale if you go to my website, www.walterray.com. I also have a Facebook fan page and a YouTube channel which has lots of videos of me at bowling and horseshoe pitching tournaments. Thank you, Walter Ray Williams Jr. So somebody will have the audacity to cut out that more than likely autograph right there. Uh, and it feels like it's actually in pressed into the paper, so it probably is a, a third autograph, which I'm not giving it $5 for that autograph. So, again, let me know what to do. Hope you got some sort of information out of that, and thank you for watching.